I love this. You have the forgiveness of a front wheel drive architecture without the disappointment of understeer. Hey crew, I've got the key to that 23 VW Golf GTI. We are gonna take it for a drive, but first let's check it out. It looks on the inside and outside. This is the eighth generation GTI after having been introduced in 1976 and I myself owned the fifth generation car. It hasn't changed all that much and really no changes for 23. There is red accenting for the GTI badge and across the nose, you get projector LED headlights as standard with LED DRLs and turn signals. Those are above five LEDs for the fog lights. This one is painted in Atlantic blue metallic with that nice metallic flake on the paint surface. Looks great with the red accents. At the side, this S trim gets 18 inch alloy wheels wrapped in Goodyear Eagle Sport all season tires, 225 section front and rear. Within those wheels are red painted calipers clamping on ventilated discs. There's a GTI badge on the side in red, body color matching door mirror caps. Stepping back to look at the profile, the latest generation nose is a little more wedged than before, but the silhouette is so iconic. The new gen also is one inch longer and one inch lower than the predecessor. And I do love that wheel design. I've always liked the GTI's wheels. At the back, we find LED tail lights and turn signals. In the middle is a GTI badge beneath the Volkswagen logo that doubles as the backup camera holder and the trunk opener. And down low, we find dual chrome exhaust outlets and a black diffuser. The GTI has been modernized in the look, but it's still so recognizable. My question for you, which is the best looking generation of GTI? I'm gonna say fourth gen, maybe seventh gen, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think and let's check out the interior. Opening up and looking inside at this classic GTI cloth plaid interior on the S trim with synthetic suede seat borders, red contrast stitching on the doors. It's hard plastics up high, synthetic suede for the insert, padded leatherette for your arm, hard plastics down low with a big door pocket and one touch up down windows. Stepping in, so easy to do. Behind my own seat at six feet tall, I've got good knee room, two pockets up top for a smartphone, another map pocket down low. The foot pockets are just sort of all right, and that goes for thigh support. Headroom is way more than all right though. Easily clear the roof, and that gets the thumbs up from me. In the middle are air vents, and that shouldn't be a novelty, but in this class, it kind of is. Down below, we've got two USB-C ports. The draft shaft dump is bigger, but it does have a cutout so you can slide your foot over and make it into the middle seat where my head once again clears the roof. So in theory, you could put three full-size adults in the second row. It just wouldn't make it a regular occurrence. Armrest does come down with two cup holders and something in the middle with padded arm resting material. That's a weird way to say it. Now let's check out the front. Door closed noise. Oh my. That's like 40 or 50 grand of thud quality, not 30. Smart Kill Century is not a thing here. The front seats have GTI logos and the seat backs have red accents with wider shoulder supports. The driver's seat has power recline with, but manual raising and lowering and manual lumbar. You get aluminum accented foot pedals and yes, we've got three of them because we've got the standard manual gearbox. The front doors have injection molding up high, this non-textured plastic trim, suede insert, padded leatherette, hard plastics, big door pocket up here as well, two one-touch windows for the front, power adjusting, not power folding door mirrors, no release for the hat from up here. So go to the back, press in on top of the logo and pull up to find a giant opening. You gotta love that part about a hatchback and 20 cubic feet of space underneath the floor is a spare donut and you can fold down the seats 60 40 by pressing on these tabs and pushing forward for a total of just under 35 cubic feet of space to close up the hatch there are built-in handles on either side and it's a really easy operation moving into the driver's seat and hitting the start stop button to put it in accessory mode turning on the digital instrument cluster that is standard and reconfigurable via these buttons on the wheel, which I wish were physical, but as touch icons, they work most of the time. There's no head-up display, injection molding up on the dashboard, more of that plastic non-textured trim, 
and an 8 inch touchscreen on the base car that upsizes to a 10.25 inch screen on upper trims, but I prefer this size because it moves to a physical volume knob and tuner slash selector. The bigger screen has touch icons that never seem to work right. This also retains wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Beneath the screen are hotkeys for things like climate control and drive modes. Further down is a wireless charging pad, which is pretty impressive to see on a $31,000 performance car. Two USB-C ports above that, leather wrap shift boot, golf ball design shift lever, just like the original GTI, gloss black around, which is just not going to wear very well, two cup holders, one clamps onto your smaller bottles, DC outlet, leather wrap topper for your console, which has a pretty small opening but decently deep storage. The steering wheel is leather wrapped and heated with perforations and sport grips at nine and three, feels great in the hands. Visibility is solid and there's standard blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic. I am a sucker for the plaid seats. And sure, this cabin doesn't have many flourishes, but for the price point, it does have some of them and that's more than you can say for its competitors. All right, let's take the GTI manual for a drive next. All right, let's fire it up. Vroom. Good, peppy start in that two liter four cylinder. Welcome, cabin camera crew. Thank you for joining me. And the camera on my head for this GTI drive. Our drive mode is going to be comfort to start and then push down and over left and up to go into reverse. That brings up a high resolution backup camera. We have parking sensors on the left hand side. No bird's eye view. This is the entry spec of the GTI. Down goes the parking brake and into reverse go we. We go. It's okay. Well, it'll be better. Trajectory lines for us. Pretty nice. And we're going to kick things off with a turning radius test. Let's see, straightened up, wheel cranked. That's pretty good. Pretty good for a front drive car where the front wheels are powering the vehicle and turning it. Turn signal sound is just fine. I've got no other comments. It's a good turn signal sound. And the world famous horn test. Ooh, sharp and loud. Okay, powertrain in the Golf GTI. It's a two liter turbocharged four cylinder that makes 241 horsepower and 273 pound feet of torque. That is routed through your choice of a standard six speed manual or an available and slightly more expensive seven speed dual clutch automatic. Now, if you watched my Golf R video not terribly long ago, then you'll know that I'm not the biggest fan of this transmission. The throws are on the longer side. The gates aren't very well defined. The clutch release point isn't super, super clear. And I think I was more offended by it in a vehicle like the Golf R with the performance potential as high as it is. In the GTI, it doesn't bother me as much and I'm not sure why. I think it just suits the very happy, peppy and accessible performance of this vehicle. Still though, I love the DSG and as a daily driver, that's a really solid transmission. I just find myself enjoying this more in this car. It's not that the gearbox has changed, it's just that it matches the character and flavor of the GTI. And as far as the powertrain, well, actually, coming up to a stop, let's talk about the brakes. Wow, that is a very well-tuned pedal. You can easily coast right up to that stoplight. Back to the powertrain. Here in comfort mode, the throttle response is measured, but never dead. And this single turbo engine has the characteristic lull in power in the first couple thousand RPM, but as you get above 2000, it really comes in strong with the boost. 
and you've got plenty of power at your disposal. 273 pound-feet of torque is considerable and more than enough for any situation you're going to encounter on the daily in just getting you up to speed, getting you up with traffic, finding that gap in traffic to make a pass. Everything's here and it's just, it's just fun. I have loved driving this car over the past week in every environment. I'm just, I'm happier behind the wheel of this thing. Another daily driving things you might be concerned with would be the ride quality. And this base S model of the GTI does have the fixed suspension. You can get adaptive dampers in the 40th anniversary edition and up, which brings a price premium of, I wanna say $3,000. And if that's really important to you, the ultimate premium ride quality, then that's worth that price. But for me, I found the suspension to be more than agreeable. The dampening is commendable in terms of how it absorbs the harsh impacts that you might go over, big potholes in the road or large curbing as you're getting up into a driveway. It takes those bumps and doesn't hit you quite as hard as some other compact sport vehicles. It's also not all that busy on undulating roads. I'm looking forward to seeing how it blends the ease of use around town with the need for stiffness and compliance in higher performance settings. And that's gonna be later on. For now, let's quiet up and listen for the NVH level. Man, it's, it's really nice. For $31,000, I mean, I have to keep reminding myself of that price point because I might want to criticize a little bit of tire noise or wind noise, but for the money, this is so good. I mean, you know you're going to fill this cabin with passengers because you're going to have fun behind the wheel and you want to share that with people, but also if you're taking things down a notch, you want to just have a mellow drive, everyone can just enjoy a casual cabin feel. I return to this just being so agreeable around town that if what I expect to happen, because I have owned a GTI, I had the Mark V, if what I expect to happen when the road gets twistier and I get more enthusiastic behind the wheel is in lockstep with what I'm experiencing here around town, this is gonna be a very positive review. Now let's go try that environment out. Now it's time to see the other side of the GTI coin. So let's go into the sport drive mode. Just gonna pepping up that throttle response and pour it on. Yowza! That is some serious grunt. I was expecting a considerable degradation in performance between the Golf R with its 315 horsepower and the GTI with 241, but this picks up speed nearly as well when you are on boost. You're flying. Wow. Let's try it from a different part of the rev range. Let's go to around 3,000 and try to pour it on. Yep, it, it takes that extra half a second to build the boost and get you moving. What about 2,500 RPM now? Staying in fourth gear and starting here. Not a long delay though. And in the 4,000 range, it is surging. I like that gruntiness as well. Got a little bit of a grit to that soundtrack. And I think some of it's enhanced here via the cabin speakers, but I'm not overly insulted by that because a savory sound. If it wasn't a savory sound, then I'd be like, oh, what are you putting in here? 
but it's a good noise. And the GTI just feels extremely stable on the road. All the way out to the red line, it feels incredibly in control of itself. And helping that is the fact that we've got a limited slip differential in the front, but it's variable. So it's not going to elicit the torque steer that an absolute limited slip diff can do, where the wheel is just cranking as you're pouring on the throttle. This can meter out that power so that it's a fluid acceleration and you can keep the wheel tracked straight. That is adding to the feeling of stability. And you know, for all my little quibbles about this manual gearbox, one thing it absolutely nails is the notch into each gear. There's no mystery as to whether you're in the gear or you're not. If you don't feel that notch, that release into lock, then you're not in that gear and you need to keep moving with your arm. So the throw may be long, but then it feels complete when you are notched into that gear. Now we should see how quick the GTI accelerates from a dig. Before we do that though, I'm gonna go into vehicle settings, go to brakes, and for the stability and traction control system, I'm gonna switch both of them off completely. I do wish that that operation was easier, like there was just a button to do it, so you could do it spontaneously. All those different menus are a bit irritating. I've got the race box set up to time the run, and let's see how we do. to 60 in 6.31 seconds. Now here's the part where I acknowledge that is a fair bit off the pace of what independent tests have seen. They've seen as quick as 5.1 seconds to 60. And I kind of did botch the launch and I rushed the shift to second. You could hear those tires chirping away. But I'm also gonna blame the fact that it's 91 degrees outside. The car is hot, the air is not cool, not dense, and so it's not making as much power as it possibly could. The good news is that even if you botch all your zero to 60 runs, the real fun awaits you when you take the GTI to a technical road. So we're gonna do that now, putting it back into ESC Sport and having a good time. Well, already I can tell you the steering is light, but it's quick. And the buildup of resistance gives me the communication I need for activities like this. You can feel the traction control system still cutting in, so I may have to turn it off completely. Now on the downhill, I'm gonna put these brakes to the test. Ooh, good feel of the pedal, good stopping power. I think the all seasons might have been overwhelmed there. So in control of its body. Tossable enjoyable okay now in addition to traction control being off i have stability control switched off as well and we'll see if that stops the interruption of power yes and that limited slip differential true to its design is not giving me torque steer it's also mitigating the plow with the nose what a machine! I love this. You have the forgiveness of a front wheel drive architecture without the disappointment of understeer. So you can just push it harder and harder and it can take it. The tires, maybe not, but the car, yes. And the GTI is so good that I know, even with the DSG, I'd be having a ton of fun on this road, but right now, I'm supremely grateful for the manual gearbox. I'm grateful that Volkswagen still offers this transmission for drivers who want that extra level of connection to their cars. And while this car doesn't have a rev match feature, the pedal placement is solid for blipping your own throttle, bringing your right foot over and just stabbing that throttle the right amount to match the revs. The 
raw entertainment factor of the GTI is just massive. So few cars, I mean the list is tiny, so few cars provide this much fun for this amount of money. Gosh darn it, for any amount of money. <laughs> I mean, the grin is just ear to ear. <laughs> Pretty much the entire time you're behind the wheel of this car. Come on. That is going to lead me to my miles per hour word of the day, which for the 23 VW Golf GTI is zestful meaning with great energy and enthusiasm because life with the GTI is zestful. It's fun, it's exciting, whether you're running errands or running canyons. Now, before we talk pricing and competition, let's talk top speed and fuel economy. The top speed for the GTI is 155 miles per hour and the fuel economy is 23 MPG in the city, 32 on the highway and 27 combined for the six-speed manual. I think with the DCT, it's one more combined MPG. And the starting figure is 31,275 bucks for this base model S GTI. Now, the roster of semi-affordable performance cars is too deep for me to go into all of them. So I'll just refine it to vehicles with four or five doors. We've got the Honda Civic SI, that starts at $28,000. It makes just 200 horsepower, gets to 60 in 6.8 seconds, while getting fuel economy of 31 combined. There's the Hyundai Elantra N, that starts at $34,000. It makes 286 horsepower, gets to 60 in just 4.9 seconds, and has fuel economy of 23 combined. Or you can have this Subaru WRX, which starts just under 32,000 bucks. It makes 271 horsepower, gets to 60 in 5.4 seconds, and has fuel economy of just 22 combined. Important note about all of those, you can get each of them with a manual transmission. But which is best? Well, the boring and yet true answer is that they're like flavors of candy. They're all gonna taste good. It's just which flavor do you like best? So to go through the list, the Civic SI, yeah, it's the least expensive and it is fun to drive, but it makes so much less power and the performance is just not at the same level as the cars that I've mentioned that I wouldn't save the couple thousand dollars and get that. I would spend a little more on some of these other cars. The WRX has the greatest variability of performance. Yeah, you can throw out a set of all-terrain tires and turn it into a rally cross car, but it's also fun to daily drive. It's fun in the canyons in the same way, not the same way, but a similar way that this GTI is. And the Elantra N, man, that thing is powerful and sharp and so good to drive, but you are having to deal with its looks, which are being updated for, I think, the 24 model year, and that will improve it quite a bit. And the ride quality is very, very stiff. The GTI, in base model form, is such an incredible value proposition that I think becomes less so as you work your way up the trim range. As this car becomes more expensive, it loses its appeal for me. But in this package, for 31,000 bucks, and I didn't share the as-tested price, but it's exactly what it starts at, 31,275. This car in this flavor is delicious. And it is probably the one I would choose for its perfect blend of practicality and performance. The WRX is definitely in there and the Elantra N, when we get the updated facelift, would be really very appealing as well. Which would you guys choose? Let me know in the comments. Would you have the GTI? Would you have the Elantra N? Would you have the Super WRX? Or would you get the Civic SI? And I hope you've enjoyed this drive review. If you did, please like, comment, and share it. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell to get notified. And I'll see you next time.